What's up y'all? It's Sean and welcome to your sixth Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be talking about uh, Fusion 360's rendering platform. So you'll see in Fusion 360 that we have a lot of tabs in here. Uh, the tab we've been focusing on mainly in this tutorial series has been the design uh, side of Fusion 360. We're going to get into the actual rendering side of Fusion 360 in this video. Uh, what I have prepared for y'all is uh, is we're actually going to go through the process of rendering a printed circuit board. So I've actually gone through the process of uh, creating a design with a TM4C, uh, some joysticks, some buttons, uh, a liquid crystal display, and you know this is just a basic controller for you know could be for a robot or could be for a game, really whatever you want. Um, in my case, I've gone ahead and modeled up a little controller, a handheld controller for myself, and I've made the whole uh, board layout. And the process of actually bringing this over to Fusion is really simple. All we do is we go over to the side here and we hit Fusion Sync. And uh, in my case, I've already pushed it to Fusion, but you can go ahead and yours may be a bit different. It'll either say Create New Design. And you can just hit create new and then it'll ask you for uh, it'll it'll log you into your fusion projects repository and you'll just have to select your the project you want to export this this file to and it'll take a little bit of time but once it's ported over what it will do is actually maintain a link between any uh, changes you make in here will also be uh, linked to the changes in here. So you can see kind of what is brought into uh, Fusion 360. You'll notice that some components actually did have a CAD model associated with them. And the reason for that is because in you'll see in uh, in Eagle whenever we go and we go and add a component some components as you can see have this little 3D icon with them and you can see that means that there is a 3D model associated with that component. But you'll see for a majority of components, they do not have 3D models associated with them, which is kind of sad because that means that whenever you do port to Fusion, they will actually show up instead as something like this. So this is actually a resistor but because this resistor did not have a 3D model associated with them, it just made a small little extrusion on the surface. Now this is really annoying because in the process we want to be able to uh, to render something like this, we don't actually have the component with us. So the workaround to this is to go on uh, GrabCAD and you can actually search up a lot of these different components online and you can import them into Fusion. What I actually have here is this huge repository of a bunch of different uh, components that you all can also use in your designs. And I'm going to walk you through the process of how you would go about uh, you know, adding all of the different components that were missing into this design and actually going through the process of how to render uh, and get a good image of what your, your thing will actually look like. Um, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is add in our TM4C. In our case, I have the screen going on the front of this, and then I have the TM4C sitting on the back. Now, I'm not going to solder the TM4C in directly. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, female headers, and that way I can plug the board in and out of this uh, this little controller board here. So for me to do that, I'm just going to go into my connectors tab here. I'm going to go to 2.4 millimeter pitch headers. And I'm going to go to female headers, two row headers. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of different, uh, different uh, components in here. In our case for the TM4C, they have um, two by 10 millimeter pitch headers. I'm just going to drag them into the design here. And you can see that it's asking, you know, if I want to rotate this. In our case, I do want to rotate it by 180 degrees this way, and then 90 degrees this way, and then I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to go and zoom in on this. 
until I get to this flat portion right here. And if I go ahead and hit joint and I click on the first place that I want to join from and then the next place that I want the join to finish from, which in my case, since I've selected this, I'm going to go ahead and select the hole that it needs to correspond to. So you'll see that it's gone ahead and locked into place, but I kind of need it to go deeper into the board. So if I go ahead and hit the front of you here, and I can go ahead and pull more on this line until I get it kind of where I want it to. And, you know, three millimeters seems pretty fine here, and I hit OK. Now you'll notice when I did that, only one of these ended up moving over and the rest of it yeah, stayed still. That's because um, I can actually go back in the timeline and each one of these uh, headers are independent of each other and in order for me to keep them all together I need to actually group them together. So if I right click on the part and then I hit uh, rigid group now I need to be do I need to do this before I go ahead and do the joint, which is why I move the timeline back. And then if I hit OK, I've done the group now, and if I go ahead and move the timeline forward, you'll see now all the components came back together. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. And same exact thing, rotate by 180 degrees, rotate this by 90 degrees. OK. That. And I'm just going to do a join again. Select the first thing I want. Select where I want that to go. I want that to go just like this. Awesome. Just going to pull it until I get to three millimeters, which is what I had before. And hit OK. And you'll see the same thing happen. So I'm just going to move the timeline back right click on the thing and rigid group it and then move the timeline forward and fantastic so I got my female headers in there and now the next thing I'm gonna do is add in our microcontroller so I'm gonna go ahead and under electrical components I'm gonna go into my microcontrollers and you can see I have a couple of different options here I'm gonna select my TM4C drag that in here and I'm just gonna rotate that by 90 degrees and I'm just going to go ahead and select one of these. And I've done my joint to select from. And I'm just going to go and get the top view. I'm just going to select the center of one of these. Okay. And you can see immediately the TM4C is sitting right on top where I need it to be. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, TM4C, plugged into the female headers, just the way I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and hit home now. And now I have the TM4C in there. I'm going to go back to my electrical components. And under displays, I have an LCD screen in here. I'm just going to drag that in here. And keep in mind, all of these components were found from, from GrabCAD. So if there's ever something you're missing and you're wondering if there's a CAD model out there for you, you can just search it up on GrabCAD. I'm just going to hit joint, and select one of these uh, faces, and the corresponding face where I want it to go, which in my case is right here. And I'm just going to go from the side view until I get something like that, until it's flush with the plastic. And that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Great. Next thing is I had a, uh, a little, uh, a little um, joystick that I wanted to put down. So under potentiometers, I actually have a thumb joystick here. And the same thing I need to do from before, which will be I need to orient this properly. So I'm rotating this by 180. And my case I need to rotate this by 90 degrees and hit OK and same exact thing as before just going to hit the joint and you need to select where I want it to go in my case I'm going to move this right here move it down a bit 
Now you can see the same thing happen. We're just going to do that same rigid group. Hit OK. And move the timeline forward and bam. Okay, so we're starting to get very close to what we want. We've got a couple components left. These are just some resistors and we have a potentiometer left and another resistor over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly go back to electrical components under resistors. Um, in our case, all of these resistors here are 0805 resistors, so I'm just going to going to add in a bunch of them. So I'm just going to add it in over and on top of each other. In our case, we have one, two, three, four, five. So I have two more to go. Okay, so have enough in here. So just same thing. I'm just going to select the face, with my joint, hit home zoom in and start placing these down one by one okay so we're actually utilizing the fact that um, Eagle went ahead and actually showed this as a extrusion and we're just going to use the face the center of this face as where we're going to place the component down okay same thing for the rest of these placing this down like that kind of a tedious process but I assure you um, the final result is very much so worthwhile place that down fantastic this is really just a bunch of joints and do that again All right, one more left. And this one goes right here. And that's our last resistor. The very last component left to do is our potentiometer. If I scroll down here, there's a little trim potentiometer here. And I'm just going to orient it into its proper state so at 90 degrees and I'm just going to go ahead and select the face I want and in our case we don't actually want to utilize this extrusion so what we're actually going to do is and actually something that I did beforehand is if you want to get rid of the extrusion that's on top of here and, and, and just utilize the holes of the part feel free to find which one of these correspond to the potentiometer and in our case I may have to cancel out of this and if I hover over the right component you'll see that this component correlates to this highlighted section so if I toggle the visibility that part is no longer there and now I'll go back to creating the joint and now I'm just going to select the face perfect it's on there I'm going to get the side view and then just place it down there and perfect so now I have all the components on my board now if I hop over from the design to the render tab you can kind of see a better view of what your whole system is going to look like but the most worthwhile part of this is going to come from our actual rendering now if you've already from the components themselves they've already been selected to have the right material and appearance finish to them so what you can do at this point is go, go ahead and hit the render tab and you can go ahead and hit render okay what's nice about fusion is you can actually select the final uh, render quality here and this is all 100 percent free and you'll see it says one credit required but 
in this version of Eagle you have unlimited credits so you can just hit render and you'll automatically be put on the render queue so all of this is done through um, Autodesk's uh, servers and this gets added to the queue of things that needed to be uh, rendered so uh, just for time's sake you know this can take around 20 minutes to complete uh, just to show you kind of what the final product would look like is you know you can have these really beautiful designs uh, and you know you get a pretty good idea of what your what your uh, your system will look like before even going to create it yourself so you can create some really cool stuff and uh, if you want a different angle you just simply need to change the angle at which you're looking for it. So if you were to hit render from this viewing angle versus this viewing angle, you would see a completely different image in here. So kind of use this to pan in, you know, which direction you want to be able to get your view from and that will adjust what you see in your rendering tab here. And when you're thing is complete so if I go ahead and click on this here you can see the job is currently under rendering queue and it's saying okay this is going to take a little less than 10 minutes and you know, when it's finished you should see the final image here okay and but for uh, the sake of what we're doing um, I'm just going to show you this image here and this is kind of what you're aiming for you know it may not seem uh, all that worth it for something as small as this but I can go ahead and show you some other designs in which we uh, use something very similar so here's a little flight computer that I had designed in which it has a lot more components to it and you know the same exact thing was done you could see a bunch in the actual timeline all this is is just a bunch of joints that are just put down on this board but whenever I go to actually render this you can see some of the old uh, versions of the render you know you can render this as many times as you want and you know you just get this really stunning and you know visual encapsulation of what your actual board will look like when it is completely assembled and you know you can use this in a lot of your presentations you know even before you go and assemble your your system this is a really good visual representation of what your system will look like so you know that's all I have for this uh, this video lecture so uh, I'll see you in the next one